This is Geometry, Chapter 6, Section 3, in which we will be testing for parallelograms. Last time, remember, we talked about parallelograms, and we talked about the various properties that they have. And everything we did started from, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then all these things are true. This time we're going to be going backwards. We're going to be thinking in a converse kind of way. We're going to be starting from if all these neat things are true, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Now we know for sure one good way to tell if we have a parallelogram. And it's still from the definition. If both sides, both sets of opposite sides are parallel, then it's a parallelogram. Goodness, this is going to feel like a Foxworthy bit. So that's one good way. If we know we have parallel sides, both sets, that's good enough. But there are other ways to get there. And they're going to be converses, like we said before. Now you'll notice I decided not to type quadrilateral every time we turned around, just in the interest of space. So our first one is the converse of the first theorem we had on the previous time. If both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If you're looking at para uh, congruent sides on both sets, that's good enough. Same thing with the angles. If both sets of opposite angles are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. If the diagonals bisect each other, then you have a parallelogram. Now, here's a new one, though. If you have one set of opposite sides that are both parallel to each other and also congruent to each other, then your quadrilateral is a parallelogram. That one's kind of an interesting one. So our job is to determine whether we have a parallelogram in front of us. And we have to use one of those theorems to justify it. So looking at our first one here, opposite sides of this are 12, so those are congruent. Opposite sides this way are 5, those are congruent. Two sets of opposite sides are congruent. Yes, that's a parallelogram because of 6, 9. Okay. Now let's look at our second one. We have a set of opposite sides congruent. And we have a set of opposite angles congruent. We don't have a theorem that says if one set of sides and one set of angles. It could well be a parallelogram. We just don't know that for certain. So we can't say yes for sure. And if we can't say it is, then we have to say it's not. Now consider this last one. This is a doozy. As you can tell by the big old box right there. <clears throat> we have congruent sides. And now we have a 60 and a 120. Those two angles are supplementary. They're consecutive interior angles, which makes those two lines parallel. We did that back in chapter 3. Ah, uh, yes, you thought those theorems were gone forever. Nope, they're still there. Consecutive interiors are supplementary. That makes the two lines parallel. They're also congruent. I mean, you can see that, 14 and 14. So yes, by theorem 612, this is a parallelogram. See how you're going to have to connect old knowledge with current knowledge. Darn. It's almost like it was planned that way or something. Okay. <clears throat> Now our next job is to find values of the variables 
so that we can say our quadrilateral is indeed a parallelogram. And they've given us this nice quadrilateral that has diagonals going through it. Well, if it's going to be a parallelogram, then the diagonals have to bisect each other. That is to say that 3z minus 1 has to be equal to 2z plus 3. Subtract the z's over and add the 1 over and we get z equals 4. Similarly, 6w minus 2 has to equal 4w plus 3. Because they have to bisect each other, do a little algebra, and then divide, and we find out that w is 2 and a half. Let's look at another one here. We have another quadrilateral. Well, we need to know that opposite angles are congruent, because that would be enough to get the job done. So I'm going to start with the easy case. 7x is equal to 56 in a little division. And then the opposite one, the other direction, 5y minus 26 is equal to 4y plus 4. Subtract the 4y, add the 26, and we get y is 30. One more problem to look at, and I purposely left my work on the page for you so you didn't have to write all that down, but the idea here is we need to decide if we have a, a parallelogram, and they want us to use the distance formula. Well, if this is going to be a parallelogram, then what has to be true is that the opposite sides have to be equal. So AD needs to be equal to BC. So I did the distance formula for AD. 3 minus 1 squared plus 3 minus 0 squared. Do a little arithmetic and I got the square root of 13. And I don't really care what that equals, I just need to be able to see if I got the same thing on the next one. BC, 8 minus 6 squared, 2 minus negative 1 squared. And sure enough, they're both squared to 13, so that's a good sign. AB, 3 minus 8 squared, and 3 minus 2 squared. Squared to 26, and again, I don't care that that's 5 point whatever, I just need to be able to compare it to the next one. And as you can tell, CD also comes out to the square root of 26. <clears throat> so since both sets of opposite sides are congruent, that tells me I have a parallelogram. And I even cited the theorem just to back myself up a little bit, justify my answer. So we used the same ideas as the previous lesson but we went in converse fashion. We started from if these neat things are true, then it's a parallelogram. Okay. And as always, if you had questions along the way, hopefully you jotted those down. Bring those in with you and ask them, and we will see you in class.